Welcome, guys. So, welcome to the first episode of the Great SEO Debate. So, um, myself, I'm Harry Sanders from Studio Hawk, and we've also got Jacob Stanley over there. Um, and we're going to be emceeing this debate, keeping everyone civil, making sure that we're not obviously uh, putting nails on our bats or you know <laughs> metal under our gloves. Um, so we're just basically going to be going through uh, the first topic, which is are backlinks as important as everyone likes to make them seem? And so Dejan uh, over there is going to be presenting uh, four backlinks. And uh, of course, David is going to be talking about some of the considerations that you may have when talking about backlinks as well. Um, so let's, let's take it away. Jacob, do you want to um, get our lovely guests to introduce themselves? Oh, Jake, can you be there? Yep, yep, I'm here. Did you want me uh, to introduce okay. myself? Yeah, I did. I did. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys. So I'm the I'm Jacob. I'm the general manager of Studio Hawk. I work alongside Harry. Um, and yeah, I guess we're really keen to ask questions yeah. about backlinks because. Do you want to introduce the two guest speakers? Yes. So we've got um, David. So David from Blinds here. Um, he'll be talking about um, why backlinks. Uh, maybe not as important as people think. And then we've got Dijan from Prosperity Media. Um, he'll be talking about um, why backlinks are important. David, give us, give, us a, give us a rundown. What, what are, who are you? What are you doing? And why are you gracing us with your presence? Oh, I'm gracing you with my presence simply because I'm stuck in a room. Can't do much <laughs> else at the moment. But yeah. um, a little bit about me. Um, I've been in the digital marketing business for seven years now, um, and I've got a interesting experience background in that because I've worked for a smaller agency as well as working for one of the really big agencies here in Sydney. Um, so I've worked on clients that paid you $500 a month to do their SEO all the way up to a huge corporation like Coca-Cola who's paying massive amounts and doing all their media and everything. So I've got a really diverse background in that uh, respect. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's um, one of the like SEOs where my foundation lies. Um, but over time, I've developed a affinity to do all marketing channels, um, which has led me into doing growth marketing. So a bit of everything and how it all works together. So. Amazing. Well, thanks for that. And Dejan, what about yourself, mate? What are, what are you doing here? <laughs> what am I doing here? Well, what can I say? I mean, a bit about me, 27. Um, pretty much I'm a senior SEO manager at Prosperity Media. Been doing SEO for roughly 13 years. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm a strong believer that SEO is the most important channel in online. Um, I'm laser focused on SEO. I don't focus on any other channel. And uh, yeah, I mean, I run the SEO Sydney Meetup. I have a, ton, a few affiliate sites. Um, I like to dabble in both, you know, some solid consulting, work for in-house as well for a big, one of the big four banks. And yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm here to pretty much prove the case that bad things do matter. Love it, I love it. Awesome. All right, well, let's start going into it. Jacob, take us away. All right, first question. Are backlinks important for small business? Awesome. So, so we're going to get um, David to present uh, first and foremost, and of course, Dejan, feel free to interject, uh, and we'll go through as well your own presentation. So, let's get that started. David, why do you think backlinks are important for small businesses? I actually, um, I think they're important, but I don't think they're the most important thing. Um, okay, the um, if you if you go back 13 years uh, to when Dijon started, I think backlinks were extremely important. But over time, Google has made a lot of changes to the algorithm. Um, they've started to move towards user first, and links don't really fit that user first mentality that they're going for. So while they are um, important, and John always says that they're still one of the ranking uh, factors, I, I think there's a lot more that people can focus on. I actually have a, a good example of um, 
why I come to this conclusion, kind of a real life example. Um, hopefully, can you guys all see that now? No, I can't see that yet. Let's see if it comes up. Um, anyway, I'll try to get this up. But essentially, I've, I've seen examples of where... Um, Here we go. Something's yeah. loading. Cool. There we go. Done. Sweet. Yeah. So here's an example of a search term in Australia, which has 480 searches a month and a massive $32 CPC, right? Um, managed mm -hmm. IT. And you can see there, these are the top five organic listings, right? Now you would assume, one would assume that the highest demand authority website would be somewhere near the top, right? Well, you'd be mm -hmm. wrong because our number one demand authority site is at number five. And you're like, well, that's cool. There are other factors and maybe um, maybe the guy at the top has, you know, just a few less links, slightly lower DR. Nah, he's got an eight. Um, his number of links are literally like one one hundredth of the number five guy. All right. And then just to show you the rest of it to see if maybe he's an anomaly, you can see here above him as well is somebody with a DR7, a DR10 and a DR31. As I was saying, I do still think links are somewhat important and you can kind of see that uh, trend in numbers two through four where they kind of mm -hmm. have that diminished um, link building. Um, but I think it's a really good example showing that it's not always about link building. Um, there's a lot of other factors um, that, that come into play when you're talking about where you're ranking. And when you're doing a small business, link building is really hard, right? It takes a lot of effort, a lot of time, especially when you're first starting. So there's a lot of other things, on-site technical, um, creating content that speaks to your user about the product you're offering, um, local business, um, schema markups, all of these things are really important and will help you uh, dominate the organic search results without ever doing link building. Um, yeah, maybe. So, I mean, yeah, that's that's kind of where I sit with small businesses is link mm -hmm. buildings are fine, but it's not necessarily the place to start. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's that's a really good point, David. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us. Dejan. Yes. You know, straight yeah. out of the red corner, David straight. launching a tirade of attacks. <laughs> Is this going to look like the Conor McGregor fight? What have you got for us, Dijon? Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> All right. So valid points, David. Um, I'll throw up a quick presentation and then I'll get back to what you just said. I pulled up the example and I can tell you straight, I've noticed something that's correlating to why that's ranking. But let me just share my screen quickly with you guys. So... So let me know when every, if everybody can see that. I can't see it just yet. Oh, no, here we go. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, you can see that? Go. We're live. Awesome. Yep. All right, so the great debate. All right, so are small backlinks important for small business? Oops, let's, let's present that again. All right, so yes or no, right? You know what, we'll just do it like this, considering that's coming up a bit funny. All right, what is a small business first and foremost, right? So again, Australia is a funny place and this is a, mm -hmm. a webinar dedicated to Australia. A small business is technically any business with $50 million or less. So it's quite substantial. I mean, like 100 employees, $50 million. I mean, yeah. straight away, we're talking about some big queries, big commercial keywords. We, we can straight away talk about, you know, some decent finance niches, or you know some decent construction niches so the actual broad spectrum of what we're looking into is quite big i mean do backlinks really matter i mean i think they don't if you have um you have implemented technical seo and you know you have content and you're ranking right but i think they do matter let's just say if you've you know developed a content strategy around a topic cluster you've implemented gmb you've done all technical seo optimizations and you're still not ranking at least on the first page for your dedicated query um, and, you're, and you've added the sandbox, backlinks could matter, especially when you're going up against websites that might be 5, 10, 20 years old in some circumstances. Mm. Um, another factor to remember is it's not every single industry is going to be the same, right? Some niches are going to be a lot easier to rank in than others. By just nature of virtue, 
some uh, businesses can drive more revenue from online. Therefore, there's going to be more competition. And therefore, when there's more competition in a niche, normally the one big factor you'll see separating the first three at least, first three positions, is backlinks. Um, here's mm -hmm. an example. I mean, when you look at the financial niche, um, this is a study out of Moz, you'll see that clearly um, it's dominating. When you look at all queries, it's, it's not as important, but there is definitely certain sectors where backlinks are a lot more important. Um, to go to an example that I can know very well, um, here's an example. This is a tool called ClearScope. Um, and what it does, it pulls the top 20 results and gives it a content grade, right? We are ranking, our agency, Prosperity Media, are ranking number one for this term, and we are at an A minus. So our content has further optimizations to do. Here's yeah. our website ranking in 16th position that has perfect on-site content, great technical SEO, yet it's in position 16. It's because the competition is so high for this query that links are a factor, content, technical optimizations are not enough. You need that extra boost in order to get certain rankings for certain commercial queries. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I agree, um, you know, it's not the be all and end all links. Um, to go to uh, your example, David, um, let me just share my screen again. So the keyword, can you guys see that okay? Yep. Yep, okay, so manage yep. query, uh, manage IP is number one. The two things this site has going for it is it's an exact match domain. I mean, when you have an exact match domain, it makes it very easy because all your backlinks are going to be branded. And if they're branded and they're using the words managed IT, it gives you direct topical relevancy for the word managed IT. A better question would be what queries or what type of keywords does this uh, website rank for in the niche that don't include the word managed IT? Also, the domain age is 20 years. So this site, if we look at the first 10, um, top 10 is the average is 11 years. This site's been up for 20 years. So whilst it not may have the links, it definitely has the domain age. And that's where different factors come in. So I do agree, David, links aren't the be all and end all, but they're definitely very, very important for queries or, or more competitive type commercial queries. Awesome. Well, thanks oh, for presenting that's... that point of view to Sharon. Jacob. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, look, I, David, I'm really interested to see what you have to say. What, what, what do you think of what Dejan just revealed? <laughs> I, yeah, no, um, I think it partially proved my point that backlinks aren't the end all be all. Um, the example he showed being 20 year old website using a domain rating for or a domain name that specifically targets that search term. Um, it, that's what I'm saying. There's so many other things that you can do. Uh, there was a, I couldn't find the example to show you guys, but there was a guy in the UK who used to do single page websites. So he would buy a domain name that was targeted towards a keyword that was highly competitive. He would build no links and he would just do on site um, content on just the one page. And he said he used to sell he was selling his like his plumber website sold for like three or four thousand dollars because he ranked number one for a local suburb plumber with zero link building. He just put all the local signals, all the schema markup, good content targeting that local term, and it was like uh, you know wash plumber suburb or whatever in the UK. Um, I don't know if they call them suburbs in the UK, but so he just did all those other things to rank, and yeah. yes. If he was, if he did all that and he was number three, the next thing you do is go out and you do link building because what you've done is not enough. So then you go to that next step. But I, I but I really feel that so many people focus on links so much, um, and they spend all this time doing it that sometimes they forget that. Let's just do a content refresh. I um, for one of my clients, and I, I can't show you the example because um, for anonymity sakes, um, they had a blog that was 15, 20 years old. And if anybody did content that long ago, used to ran a blog post like every three days, that was like 30 words, targeted a keyword, and you just kept slamming them out, right? And that was how you ranked. They still had a ton of that on their blog. And I was like, okay, let's pause all this other stuff. Um, and I did a blog refresh where I went through, you know, three, 400, blog posts from ages ago, I said, these seven are all the same topic. 
here's a much better version of that. Let's consolidate, let's make a really big post. And I literally tripled their organic traffic to their blog over the course of three or four months, depending on the search term, um, because um, I did that content refresh. HubSpot actually did a case study about how they did the same thing and saw a very similar refresh. It just shows that yeah. sometimes the links aren't what does it. It's it's the content. As, it's, as of Ahrefs and those kind of things. So yeah, look, absolutely. Um, and, and it is interesting to see that. I mean, tell me, you know, how do you think the view, oh, sorry, why, if this is so, so true and we're seeing this um, happening, but we're still seeing links playing a part, why does why do some people still believe backlinks are dead? Does do you guys have a hard line stance that backlinks are dead? Why or why not? You, you know, Dejan, let, Dejan, you open this one, bud. <laughs> All right, backlinks are definitely not dead. I mean, what I dare say is the type of backlink. So yeah, sure, mm. you know, the scrape box blast of fifteen years ago doesn't work anymore. The blog mm. comments that were a decade ago don't work anymore. You know, it's a type of backlink that matters. You know. You want to be building it from relevant sites that have decent topical authority that preferably have referring domains coming back to them, back to that page that is that are relevant to the topic that you're trying to get a link to. I mean, it's definitely changed in perspective. I mean, it's definitely hard. I think a lot of people avoid link building because it is difficult. And I'm sure you would agree, Harry, it's a grind. Like, it's not easy to get a good link in 2020. Like, it's just not, you know, every... Every webmaster under the sun has, you know, hundreds of emails in their spam box or in their inbox, you know, of people trying to get a link of any site that's, you know, above, you know, authority score of 30 or 40. Like, this is the reality we're in. So I do agree that, like, uh, maybe, like, content, on your content point, David, like, I do agree that, uh, you know, content is a factor. There's no doubt about it. I mean, the two biggest, I personally see the two biggest factors in SEO are content and links. And then, obviously, you've got the technical um, to support that. But I think like for your mention, you mentioned plumbers, like, let me quickly share my screen. I can give you an example. Um, so this is the term plumber Sydney, right? So if we look, we've got the number one using um, a content of B grade. And by the way, how this is calculated is essentially it uses the natural language processing API of Google and it uses TF-IDF analysis. So it's quite comprehensive to um, for this actual query. So Google's putting this query and it's looking for these keywords and like synonyms or like content in um in supporting areas, right? So you've got to go down all the way to 12, you know, this page got 2,400 keywords, the content grade of A plus, yet it's still 12 when you've got, you know, the number one in B minus. So whilst content is important and you need it to rank for certain industries, it's definitely not enough. And that's kind of where like my backlink argument comes into. Um, yeah, love to hear your thoughts, David. I'll start with, I, I agree with you, Black, backlinks are not dead. Um, I think anybody that says that is um, is wrong. Um, I just think that, as I said, they're not the first thing you do. Um, you, you know, you start a, a brand new business and you're like, I'm going to go out and I'm going to get 100 links and I'm going to rank for my search term. And it just doesn't work. Um, it, not if you don't have the right, you know, foundation. It's, um, and... I mean, to put it in a different perspective, right? Let's not talk about new businesses, starting businesses. Let's talk about bigger um, businesses. Um, uh, working with a client in the finance industry, um, you'll find that they were trying to break into an industry that was highly competitive and they focused very heavily on links. Um, and they had some good success with it, right? They, they, started ranking across a number of terms, by the way, it's not just a single term. They started ranking across a number of terms on the first page with all their link building efforts. Um, but it wasn't until they went and did a complete website refresh, they sped up the website, they added a um, review markup, um, so improved the click-through rate. Um, and, and that's a big debate in itself is, you know, Google will tell you that people clicking on your organic rank listing does not correlate directly to ranking. But then they'll turn around and say, but engagement with your website does. So what they were getting is higher engagement with their website because people were clicking and then people were engaging with their website and they started to rank better and better. And they ended up for um, ranking in the top three for two keyword terms that they were they were targeting this year in Australia. Um, 
and they've gone from being a small player to being a threatening player in and that industry. David, so. David, how do you think that works from the perspective? Look, we've got a lot of questions coming in, guys, and keep them coming. But how do you think that coming uh, big DC, Daniel Chung himself, uh, he'd like to hear some perspectives yeah. from um, brands with a new business on a new domain versus an existing business uh, with an old domain and, and how those backlinks play in. Like you were saying in that finance sector, was that a new domain or an existing domain there, David? Um, that was actually, I mean, depends on what you classify as new, fairly new. Um, they were, um, when you put them against the people they were going against, so the people they were going against were global companies that have been around for decades um, and they'd only been around for a shorter period of time. Um, and I wouldn't necessarily classify them now as a new domain because they've been around for long enough to be a, uh, I'll call them a middle-aged domain. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but like, if you're looking at the perspective of brand new versus existing businesses, if you've got an existing business and you've been around for 20 years or 30 years and you're in a particular industry, you're probably getting a lot of organic value in link building, right? Um, you look at somebody like CBA, right? I don't think Commonwealth Bank goes out and does a massive link building campaign to try to outrank their competitors. They just get links all the time. Right, because people link to their news articles, people well, link to their they well, might Dijon, they might do a Dijon, what are your uh, thoughts on that? Is that, is that something <laughs> that you've got experience in or know about? I might do, I might do. I mean I definitely strongly disagree. I mean, I have looked into that space extensively and I've seen the links coming through and I can definitely see some correlation to link building occurring in the finance sector for sure. Um You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised is what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you think they're earned? Because I've looked at I've looked at their backlink before, and I think that a lot of them are very natural, organic, and they're not earned links. That I my answer to that is I think the SEOs are doing a very good job. Then, if that's your conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, obviously, um, <laughs> without going into it, there's obviously confidentiality issues, but. You know, I, um, I'm sure Dijon has a wealth of experience in, in that sector. And I know um, that, you know, um, the company works for Prosper and do, you know, uh, a lot of stuff with those with those banks. And so that's why I was interested to see uh, his take on that kind of thing. So, yeah, interesting. And look, in the interest of moving this along, guys, I know we've got some great points um, going on. Um, you know, uh, David, you know, did, did you want to present anything on how you think that those those that view of backlinks has changed over time? Or, uh, sorry, I didn't actually prepare anything for that one. So that's okay. That's you know, Jacob. Did you did you have any thoughts? Yeah, well, I like it, sort of the general. Um, I guess from hearing both you talk, the general thing that I'm getting is that, um, but depending on how big your business is, or um, there's a mm. certain sequence, maybe David, where you're getting at. So. One of my questions that I had for you guys was if you had to put um, the three pillars of SEO in order, what what order would you put it in being on-site, off-site and content? What order would you put it in, David? If you had to. I would put it in the order of content, off-site and technical or um, yeah, so sorry, content, off-site, on-site. Um, okay. And my example for that is news agencies around the world. Mm. They they don't give a crap about their on-site. They don't do anything to optimize. They create good content that everybody wants to read. They get lots of links. And guess what? They rank for so many terms, right? You do a search mm. term for anything in the news, it's always a news agency that's coming up first, whether it's news.com, uh, CNN, whoever it is. Uh, and then, you know, they say bad news is good news for them, right? Because the worse the news is, the more they rank for it. But they don't do anything technically. So mm. that's how I would do it. Dijon, do you have any okay. thoughts on that? Or how would you place them? 
Yeah, I mean, I completely depend on the site. I mean, if it's a fresh yep. business that, you know, you've just opened up, you know, it's still in the sandbox, I'd probably say content is the most important thing. If it's a big monster site and it's, you know, got, you know, a high authority score, 70 plus, and there's a lot of content on the site, but it might be a legacy site, I'd classify technical as the most important thing. Um, but if it's a site that's in a relatively competitive space, an so example is finance, then I'd consider the links the most important, then followed by content and technical. So I just think it just depends on like the various different niches um, would depend on the answer there, Jake. Absolutely. And uh, massive shout out, hashtag it depends. Thank you, SEO guys. Um, okay, so look, that's that's great. And, and, and Dejan, did you have any views, also posing the same question, do you have any views on how um, those backlinks have changed over time? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, backlinks have definitely changed over time, right? I mean, like I said, the, you know, gone are the days where you know you could just go on to you know some sort of a forum and buy a backlink package and rank on the first page you know you could do this 12 13 years ago you can't do that now like backlinks have definitely changed and the perception has changed you know we have some clients that they expect certain metrics they expect you know thousand traffic you know they expect the, the links to be coming from and the traffic to be in tier one countries they expecting a lot more dot com that you whereas that wasn't always the expectation before um, they definitely starting to talk about metrics a lot more. So I think people know what the difference between a forum post um, and an in-contextual link and a resource link and a niche edit. People are starting to know the difference. And I think yeah. change is coming with the market starting to move forward and understand SEO more broadly. I think that's where the biggest change is coming from. And SEOs, especially agencies, we have to adapt to that. I think that's where that change is really coming. And of course, uh, yeah. what we're looking for as well and what kind of links they're valuing. As, it's always kind of been the same, but I think a lot more people understand, uh, like it's those top tier, like in contextual links. And yeah. also because a lot more people understand, they become a lot more harder to get just on the supply and demand part. Yeah, so. it's, it's very interesting. And it is that supply and demand curve, but I do agree. I think the market is becoming a lot more educated. I think those days of receiving 50 PBN links in your report and being my agency <laughs> good, they're getting me lots of links is well and truly dead. Um, and I think Great. people are starting to, you know, be happy when they see one or two really highly, you know, relevant contextual links in a report that they're starting to go, well, that's actually a really good outcome. So no, that's 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 a great view, um, Dijon. Especially with Microsoft announcing and saying things that SEO is going to be the most important hard skill of marketers coming into 2020 and beyond. I mean, there's there's a lot of factors in play there. Um, to break it up, guys, and again, thank you so much, guys, for the questions. We we have so many coming in. There's no way we're going to be able to get to everyone, so I appreciate it. But um, going through, I'm trying to merge a couple of these just because because there are so many. So, um, or, or maybe we'll do a quick fire round. Um, Daniela asks, what kind of content naturally gets a lot of backlinks? For example, goes viral. And I'm going to merge that with one of Daniel's questions, which is what are the top, what are the first five links that businesses should build? Just merging them together to kind of, you know, make it a little bit more tricky. Um, All right. John, can you give us a quick answer on that? Yeah, I'll give you a quick answer. I mean, like, type of content that's going viral at the moment. I mean, anything to do with, like, the tragic coronavirus issue, um, especially statistics-based pieces in any niche. I mean, people would naturally link to statistics. I mean, what is a link to begin with, right? It's a reference. Mm -hmm. And statistics are a natural reference point, so hence why... The correlation between those statistics pieces getting a lot of links can work. Top five backlinks to build. Um, if you're just starting out, I mean, a good base, if you're a local business, would be um, niche specific directories. So that would be, um, you know, if you're, you know, your instance, Dan, if you're like a wedding photographer, it'd be like wedding, like directories within your like kind of city or country um, would probably be the very first thing you do before you obviously, you know, build out your content strategy and, you know, have more linkable assets to go out there and uh, hit the market. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks, Dejan. And, and David, um, launching into two more questions. Um, Alistair and Iris have both asked the exact same question, made my job really easy. So thank you so much, guys. Um, is it worth using services like the Hop for backlinks? Different SEO experts have different opinions. And Iris says... I want to learn more about the backlink quality of the Hoth. Anyone use this before? Could you could you give us an answer to that? Have you heard of the Hoth, David? What are your thoughts on these kind of link brokering services? Are they worthwhile? Present so, your view. 
I have heard of the Hoth. I've never used the Hoth. Um, however, I have used a company in the past called Fat Joe, which is mm -hmm. a similar brokered link building website. Yeah. Um, and having used them, I my feeling is if you're willing to pay for the higher domain authority links, which can get quite expensive on those, it can be of some value because um, I've seen some really good high quality links come through from that. But when you start looking at some of the lower end, it, it almost feels PBN. It feels very much like you'll see three links come through and you're like, these websites look like they were designed by the exact same person. Um, mm. So that's my opinion was when you use them, if you're, you, you, you pay for what you get for or what you yeah, get. Sure. So if you pay for the higher end 30 plus 40 plus DR links, you actually will get pretty decent links. Um, but at the same time, you go to an agency um, at that point, you can almost pay the same for your links and you get a little bit more control over it because yeah. uh, you work with somebody like Deshaun or myself and you're like, I want this niche. I want these kind of links. And you're paying maybe a little bit more, a little bit more of a premium for them, but not that much more. And you're getting a lot more control over it. So that's kind of my opinion yeah, on it. Interesting. Dijon, did you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, these services, we've tested them, but we kind of avoid them lately, to be honest, especially. Um, and there's one metric, there's one reason for it, to be honest. If you go and you have a look at the outgoing links, so how I look at a good link is especially like these buying links, because so anybody can get them. It. It's a free for all. So what you want to do is you want to go and like look at the outgoing link profile. So like go plug it into Screaming Frog, do a scrape of the site, and then you'll see all the sites that's like linking out to, and you'll see it growing as day by day goes. Um, like that's the issue. Like normally you'll see a 10 to one ratio with some of these. So 10 outgoing referring domains for every one incoming. I mean, it's it's not a good signal to Google. And that's that's kind of why I avoid them, to be quite honest. Um, you definitely, if you're gonna be doing link building, you wanna do it properly. You wanna do your research of what kind of links you wanna build and you wanna build relationships with sites that actually matter. You're better off going and building a relationship with a DR7080 site than you are, yeah. you know, getting a bunch of, you know, shoddy DR2030s and paying 100 yeah. million US for them. Like that's, that's the reality. Yeah, and that's a really point, good point, guys. And look, um, both presenting kind of good views on that. I mean, the giant of the view that it's, you know, good to build these relationships yourself. You get high quality links. And obviously the point that anyone's got access to these. Um, and the, the problem with these kind of links is the more people that use these services, I mean, it's almost like the worse they become, huh? Uh, it's like what they say. Yeah, it's like what, what people say about Bitcoin. As soon as your aunt starts telling you to invest in Bitcoin, that's when you should sell all your Bitcoin. Um, so it's actually kind of it's actually why when you pay for the higher authority ones, I think you get a little more value from them because, because if you start looking at the outgoing links mm -hmm. from those forty and fifties that they're selling, it's not ten to one; it's only three to one. Um, yeah, because everybody's yeah, buying right. the cheap ones. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And look, that's that's a good point. And also the other point you made, David, around, you know, getting an agency to to, to broker those links can often be cheaper due to economy of scale. Um, right. You're paying a premium to the Hoff, just like you would an agency um, to, to do them. And, and look, I always um, Australians will know the uh, the superannuation. Ad. I think it's the Australian super where they say same same income you know different super and it goes through and we often run through this with clients like here's what you would spend if you went through a link brokering service and what outcome you'd get uh and this is what you would get if you broke it through an agency just because if an agency has got a lot of clients in finance um they're going to be able to broker finance links for cheaper than even if you would go direct to that person um which is an interesting concept so no look, look thanks for um presenting those views guys um, Jacob, I know your internet's a bit spotty at the moment, but um, did you want to did you want to ask the next question? Yeah, sure. I, this is a, this is one that I really can't wait to hear you guys talk about. Um, close to but home. Tech, yeah, close to home for sure. The uh, the legend Brian Dean himself from Backlinko, um, he loves a skyscraper technique, and I'm just wondering if you guys think it's still relevant in 2020. Yeah. Really David, if you want to kick off the, what what do you think? Do you think it's still relevant in 2020? Yes and no. <laughs> okay. Um, Tell me. This actually comes back to the question that was asked in chat about how do you uh, create content that gets back links, goes viral. Well, I 
think the skyscraper technique is overused for just standard content. But if you can find a really unique way to present, like it's got to be super unique. It's got to be different. It's got to be, um, the really good example is um, some of the, um, what's that insurance company, Lemonade or something that was in the US. And they just changed the whole way they presented an insurance company on their website and just went viral because of it. And they've got massive number of links and immediately ranked well and did really well because they've gone and picked an area where everybody's doing the same thing. They're all talking about it the same way. And they just went super basic, right? They didn't try to sell themselves. They just said, this is what we are. And they did something different. Um, to go the other way, you could actually go out there and you can find a topic. Um, so, you know, Brian Dean's done his massive, like, 80 page long, you know, SEO uh, page. I'm sure everybody in the chat's read it uh, and it just goes forever. But if you took all that same information and put it into a really easy to read or understand format where somebody could just quickly read an infographic, um, a video, and, it, and maybe it only took three or four pages to do, but you presented all the same content, that could be really effective and it would be something that's like, I don't want to go read this 80 page SEO essay. I want to read this. It's just four pages and it gives me all the information I need. So if you can find a really unique, cool way to do something, um, I think the skyscraper technique still works. But if you're just out there consolidating the top six pages and making one massive article, I don't think that works as well anymore. So David, do you think, um, do you think, are you saying basically splitting it up? Do you think that's because of mobile users? There's obviously, more users on mobile than ever right now. So do you think because of splitting up that content, it just makes it a lot easier for users to access and to go through? Or what, what's the I, reason for, for thinking to splitting it up rather than having long the, the modern day person wants bite-sized content, but they want it yeah. to be super informative. Um, you know, even five years ago, six years ago, people wanted to read huge pages on a topic, but now they're, they're traveling in the train, they have 20 minutes so they get to work, um, you know, Dijon wants to find out the coolest new thing in SEO. He doesn't have all day to read something. Something needs to capture his attention in the eight minutes so that then he's like, I want to read more about that. And then he goes and does it later. Maybe he links to it, um, shares it with the people in his company, that kind of thing. But it's mm -hmm. got to be quick. It's got to be bite sized. And yeah, I think mobile plays a huge part in that, um, not having huge pieces of content. All right. So, well, Dijon, what? Oh, sorry, Jacob. I uh, know you're right. I was just going to say, yeah, Dijon, I'm really keen to see what you think. Um, if you think the skyscraper technique is still relevant in 2020 or not. Yeah, I mean, do I think it's relevant? I mean, it's definitely overused in the affiliate space, like 100%. No, no questions about that. Is it relevant for Australian businesses? I say you can do it, like if you have a decent piece of content. And it's like, like I said, we talked about statistics pieces earlier, like you have a relevant statistic and you know, you're pitching to a site that's mentioned a 2017 our data statistic and you have a 2020, 100% valid. Um, the only problem is when you're doing those types of uh, skyscraper pitches, I've noticed in Australia particularly, like it's hard to get to the decision mover for a lot of the sites. So mm -hmm. especially when you're trying to get um, a link, like maybe like upgraded on like a local, like a small business type site, it's hard for that email to go to the decision maker or to the person that's actually like making the website changes. Hence why it can be difficult to do for Australian space sites. On the more global scale for an affiliate site, the reason it's overused is because the affiliates are the decision makers and they're the ones that implement the link. So I think it's an interesting strategy. Um, I've tested it. I have gotten some success, not a lot personally. Um, I think okay. it does work, but it may be for certain verticals that I've tried it in, maybe having get the best results. And other yeah. strategies work a bit better. Interesting. Okay, so so kind of similar views on the skyscraper technique. But what, what do you think, Deshaun, about David spoke about uh, shortening content versus having long pieces of content like Brian Dean advocates and recommends? What, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, the way I normally like see content length is I see what's working. So, I mean, I'll go into the search and I'll see, you know, what the top three, top five um, kind of quick for, for a specific query, how much words do they have, how much words of content, and then I'll maybe add 10 to 15%. Am I going to go right off the bat and do a 5,000 word article? Probably not, because let's be honest, most businesses don't have the internal resources. 
Um, maybe it's like a budgetary issue. It's, it's a lot more expensive to build out that piece of content. So the ROI might not be there from day one, whereas it might be for, you know, 500 to 600 word piece. I think it just depends on like the query that you're targeting. Um, I think in general, obviously you're right, David, like probably you'd want to look like have longer content, I guess. Um, shorter content has its place, definitely, like especially for terms where, you know, um, you know, four or five hundred words are the norm. That's that's kind of my reasoning for it. Absolutely. Well, that's that's a good it's a good point forward, Dijon. Um, look, regrounding this back um, off the questions and some diversions, let's 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 talk about what differences and what's your viewpoint. What's the difference you can see between acquiring backlinks for small and large businesses? Dijan, could you kick us off? What are the differences you see between those two different verticals? Um, <laughs> the obvious one, the second they see an email from a big business, they want big money for the link. <laughs> but mm. uh, I mean, like, definitely you can you can do it for both. Um, doing it from a brand name, I mean, like, for a big name, you have a lot more opportunity, right? So, you know, if a business has been mentioned, and you're, you know, outreaching from that business, it's a lot easier to maybe get un unlinked brand mentions. Whereas, you know, for a small business, that opportunity doesn't exist because maybe that small business doesn't have really any brand mentions or big media sure. mentions anywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's and and do you I think, thought. Dijon, that it's worthwhile big brands still doing outreach or link acquisition? 100%. Like known brands have more sway. Like people know who they are. People are a lot more inclined to reply to an email from a big brand as well. Um, we've noticed the email open and reply rates a lot higher from, you know, big name kind of companies versus smaller or Gmails. So I definitely think, yeah, it is worth it 100%. Yeah, I gotcha. Well, well, David, what are your thoughts then? Do you think it's still worth these big brands doing link acquisition? Or do you think there's other things that are more important? I, I think that it depends on the objective. Um, if there's something that the big brand wants to push that they haven't pushed before, I think you have to have some sort of a link building campaign, whether that's a PR uh, mention and link building campaign, or if it's um, you know an actually targeted outreach to people to get them to link to it to talk about it. I, I think when you look at a big big brand, like you look at like we'll use Nike, Nike as it stands for people searching for shoes, athletic shoes or Nike, probably doesn't need to do a whole lot of targeted link building. But if mm. they run some sort of a brand new campaign or uh, you know a really cool content piece, that they, they have to. They, they, it's just people aren't just going to know about it. You have to go out there. You have to build the PR around it. You have to build the link so that when people start searching for it, they see it. Um, and that's big businesses. Um, Conversely, with small businesses, I think it's very uh, similar. Um, I worked with a, uh, a, a national in, uh, interstate removalist company here in Australia called Moval. They had some really high success with doing a, a PR release. Um, they did a big PR release and it really pushed them up. Um, they moved from ranking on the second page to ranking on the first page of Google for their search term. Um, and it really shows the value that even as a small one or two men shop. If you if you do some kind of a big media mention, it has value. Um, the advantage that big businesses have is, as Dijon was saying, they have a bit of sway because they've got a name behind them. They can go to these guys and be like, "Here's Coke's, here's Nike, here's BMW's cool new thing," and everybody wants to talk about it, right? Um, perfect example is Donald Trump. Donald Trump could get anything he wants mentioned in any media agency around the world right now because. He is the biggest brand name in the world, I think, at the moment, because everybody talks about him negatively or positively. He's a big brand name. Mm. Um, so they do have that sway that really helps them, but they still need to do it. Um, Interesting. They want to get the word out there. So. Uh, we got, we've still got lots of questions coming in, guys. I've got um, one here from um, Daniela Furtado. So do you guys have any cases? I'll start with you, David, um, of websites that have performed well without any link building. And, you know, they just focused on their content or UX, so they weren't really, you know, link building focused. Um, a clerk, when we say perform well, are we saying growing or are we saying ranking number one? Because um, I go back to that what? same example. Uh, traffic Moogle. increasing. Even so we go back to that same example. Yeah. Moval, which is the interstate removalist company here in Australia, they, before they ever did a lot of link building, 
Um, they just focused on good content, restructured their website, um, and they went from not ranking to ranking at the the top of page two, bottom of page one, and their traffic increased by like 10x because that was just yeah. for their key term. When you started going to the more niche, they started to rank better. Um, so they actually 10x their traffic then, but um, you know that's not to say that's at the point where you almost need to do that next step, which is link building, because then they did it again when they link built. After doing it without link building, it did have good success. Then pairing it with the link building, they had great success. So, sure. so you're saying um, it's in, in waves rather than you know all yeah. together. Like, like we okay. managed to get them and we managed to get them enough success without the link building to get them to that point where they're like, "Cool, we're making some money. I can pay for some link building now." And um, and they sure. went out and did that. And, yeah, the, the genre, would you have done it the same way? Would you have put that focus on links? Or do you think if you had to put that focus on links early, do you still think they would have seen that gain through the link acquisition? I mean, look, like definitely, I mean, there's a case where, you know, content does matter. I, I'm not disputing that. But I think both should be done in unison. I mean, you should probably mm. should be building content and through that content and traffic going to that, those pieces of content naturally does come links. So, I mean, definitely it should be done in unison. That, that is the most natural way. Um, to answer Daniela's question, um, is there any cases? My own site, so I run a construction blog, buildsydney.com, gets like 20,000 visitors a month in Sydney. Um, I was getting good results when I was just mentioning specific development. So when I was just like writing content for a specific high rise, like, you know, Paramount Square or the Crown in Sydney, and I was getting okay results. But it wasn't until like link acquisition from like big PR like websites like Sydney Morning Herald came in that I started getting a first position for something like Sydney development or Sydney construction. Mm -hmm. Like so I do think like you can get like your content ranking for like queries that are relatively uncompetitive and especially if you can build a topic cluster around it. But it's not until link, link building comes in that you can really start ranking for competitive commercial queries. And I'm, that's that's really what I want to stress here. No, I love that. And that's a great hardline stance to take. I think it's, it's brilliant to get that kind of view. No hashtag, it depends. This is how it be. Um, That's it. David, David, what do you think? Like, yeah. do you have that I, same view? Do you have a different view? I would, I would actually probably have to agree with him on this. Um, the more niche the, the topic, oh. uh, the easier it is to do without links. Um, if you want to rank for, um, I don't know, you know, three ply toilet paper sold on Windsor Road in Balcom Hills, mm. which has zero search volume a month. <laughs> you yeah. can create a content piece, no links, one page <laughs> website, and probably rank for it, right? Mm. Um, but if you wanted to rank for toilet paper right now, good luck without yeah. doing a lot of media yeah, mentions, absolutely. right? Because everybody's searching for it and everybody's looking for it. Yeah. So, well, 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 to make things difficult, David, if, if, I was a small business and I wanted to rank, let's say I just started out a uh, finance company. I've decided, you know, things are tough at this time. I want to start lending out money to businesses. And I reckon I'm going to make some serious bank of it. If I, if I said I want to rank number one for finance, business finance Melbourne, wouldn't you then say that that's a highly competitive term and that my biggest focus should be on link acquisition? No. Um... You need customers before you do any link acquisition. You need to make money. You need to prove that it works. I would actually do outbound marketing. Um, sure. I would find a way to say, I'm a brand new business. I'm offering this really unique thing. Um, I know a lot of businesses are struggling, so I'm offering whatever this is in the current crisis. I'm going to find a bunch of targets, and I'm going to do outbound marketing and get a bunch of people on board before I do anything else. Then I get those yeah. people on board. And that's when I'm going to actually use them to build links. I'm going to go to them and say, hey, did you love the service? Leave a review. Did, you know, I would love it if you, um, you know, spread the word, be a bit viral, use the referrals. And eventually what happens is you start to get almost natural, um, just some natural referrals. And now I got the money coming in and I've proved my business case. Now I start focusing on those other things. Um, but I think for a brand new business, like in that highly competitive industry, outbound marketing is going to be where it's at. So you reckon that's the fastest way to get me to rank for that for that specific term? I, I think it's the fastest way to get 
people to know your business, which will result in you ranking, especially in that competitive space. Okay. Dijon, I, I've come to you now and I've said, David's told me to focus on outbound. I, I want to rank for this term as fast as I can. What are we going to do? Are we, are we going to fix my website? Are we going to do some content? Or are we going to get some lean, mean, link machines? <laughs> Like anything in this year, first we're going to say it depends. You know, we're going to look at your technical, we're going to look at your content, we're going to look at your current link profile, we're going to see where, you know, wins can be made. Uh, but if we were to rank for what was it? Uh, finance. Uh, Business finance, finance Melbourne. That's what I want. Business finance Melbourne. Um, we're going to look at it, we're going to see how much links your competitors are getting, first off. with I would definitely say a focus that that is a commercial period, and I would dare say that links have to be involved in some sort of way. I will then look at, okay, like the top three have got X, Y, Z amount of links. And, you know, there's X, Y, Z amount of links coming through per month. Now, how many of those links are going to, re from relevant sites, how many of those links are going to relevant pages to actually move the needle? Then I'll probably work at a formula of X, Y, Z links are needed to rank for this query per month. And that's probably the aim of attack I do. And then I look for like opportunities within the niche. And then I go backwards and start creating the content or like think of like different strategies where we can attain the links. Would yeah, our yeah. links like required for that hard I would dare say so without looking at the specific they are especially in the current climate so yeah I definitely probably would start off with links to be fair like um, they just would be required to rank anywhere of substance for that query I think Dave's point is very interesting like brand mention like the whole point of it I think is people to know your brand people to get brand mentioned what happens with brand mentions naturally people link back once you business is being talked about 100% you know you want your site you want your business trending on like Google Trends 100% agree and links can come from the I do agree but I guess that's just one of the strategies to attain when it comes to backlinks and if the question was what would you build backlinks the answer is yes because the natural process of getting those brand mentions is links and it comes back to link acquisition so yeah I think love both it. are right love it Dijon and and David, do you think, given enough time, uh, do you think you would need to focus on link acquisition, or do you think they'll naturally come if you built a big enough outbound brand? I I think that they would naturally come. Um, if I went out tomorrow and I offered a business finance service that said, um, you know, we're going to loan ten thousand dollars minimum, but we're going in the current crisis, we are going to do 0% interest for the first three months after you take the loan out, right? That's a massive boon for businesses. They're like, oh, cool. I can take money and I can pay back just my principal for the first three months. I don't have to pay any interest. It's a huge saving. It's something that'll hook people um, that are struggling and be like, oh, that's how I can keep my business going for a few months. And I don't have to pay as much back as if I went to one of the big banks and paid mm. interest. And then what you can do with that is now you got a bunch of people on it. Now, now people start to talk about it. You send it out. To, now you can do that PR release. You go to the PR, you go out to the news agency. This is what I'm doing. Um, this is what I'm offering. And I've already got this many people on board. Here's my testimonials. And the next thing you know, you got people um, mentioning in the news and now people are talking about it and now people are searching for it. And even if there was no links, I reckon that if you hit that virality and that trending, you know, the Google trends, um, you'll start ranking for it just because user intent. Long term, yeah. however, I think that would be a short term solution. So that would be a really great way right now to rank very quickly. But long term, I think you have to start looking at some of those other things and you have to think, okay, this will last me for the next six months while we're all isolated in our homes. What am I gonna do after that? So sweet, yeah. now my first couple of months is done. How can I start building ongoing links? How can I fix my technical? How can I create good content that keeps people coming back? That keeps my authority past yeah. this trend, right? Because I don't want to be one of those guys that's there for a few days yeah. and, then back, and then So gone, eventually right? it does come back to, to getting some links. Yeah, I, I think eventually it would. So. Yeah. Oh, I'd definitely like to add that. I'd love, love to add to that. I'd love to. Um, so <laughs> I think like when it come, you made a big claim there, a big claim when you said, like all a business needs is for um, for it to be searched and to rank. I can show you so many like clients that um, when we started only ranked for their brand term and had thousands of searches for their brand, but really like no other commercial queries. That that's number one. Number two, hundred percent agree. If you're you know like one of the big four that have come out and said you know we'll give you six months no repayments on your um, no payments on your mortgage. 
if you're one of, I think who did it, like ANZ, NAB, and Westpac agreed to it, I think in the latest update, 100% if you're a big business, you're going to get the press everywhere. If you're a no-name business that's just opened up on the corner, it's going to be yeah. very, very, very difficult to get, at, at least in my experience, like listings on any publication worthy or highly authoritative to get those links. That, it'll, ha it'll have that, to be pretty extreme. Opinion, like, <laughs> yeah. You have to almost beat the market, right? If you had done it you would. four weeks ago before A and Z had done it, you probably could have gotten it, right? If you do yeah. it now, you're right. right. Like, nobody cares. Everybody's doing it. So now yeah, you have to yeah. come up with that cool new thing that everybody yeah. wants. But that's yeah. what the fun of marketing is, is trying to yeah, come up with something true. exciting. So That also matches the business use case. Because you can come out and say as a business financing, oh, we're going to do $10 million, no approval, unsecured loans. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great idea from a marketing perspective. You'll take off. From a business perspective, that's probably not going to work out so well for you. Um, so, yeah, it is that, that constant juggle. Look, throw back to most businesses. Oh, sorry, most businesses as well already, you know, provide value. So it's just a matter of, you know, transcribing that digitally as well. Right, um, that's really and, good point. and getting and, and reaching that out. Right, like, you know, you might just do you know loans, but you might do it in a way that services way above your competitors. Right, you over service yeah. them, and that's what you know. If that's what people want and there's a demand for that, then you you basically want to reach that out and let people know, hey, look, we service way better than our competitors. So it's just, yeah. I think there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of outreach opportunities that people just yeah. don't even think about or get creative. Yeah. There's actually a really good example for that. Um, mm -hmm. We've got talking about the finance industry and loans. Um, I remember when all of the little online loan companies came into play, uh, the UBank and the loans.com.au, they started from nothing and they're like, come to us, everything's online. You don't have a branch. You don't have to go in and talk to anybody. Just apply online. We'll give you a call, ask for a few documents, and we're going to give you a much better rate than anybody else can because our overheads are really low. And they marketed it well through the PR, and they were offering something that nobody else was offering. And now look at them, right? They're doing yeah. extremely successful. They branch into car loans. Um, it, it shows that if you can come up with something that's, you know, like Jacob was saying, something better, and something that services well above what everybody else is doing, you're going to break into the market. And that's the real trick with early business, right? Early, we're talking about startup businesses, so business finance, Melbourne. You have to find something that's going to break in early. Yeah. Um, All right. We're going very broad here, guys. It's good. We're covering a lot of ground. Um, so uh, Alistair McMillan has a question, uh, and they want to know, is it worth a digital agency to have a back link on their own website from each of their client sites. Did you have this prosperity reach out to all your clients and ask for a link back to, to your site? Uh, no, we don't. <laughs> why, no, why not? Um, well, what, for one, we feel a link should be only like used when it's like reference based. And to say, you know, to go on, like you'll see these site wide footer. I mean, 10 years ago, that was like one of my link building strategies where I'd go and put a footer link and, you know, you get tens of thousands of referring domains, you know, when I'm sponsoring a template from Blogger or WordPress, like it used to work until like, you know, you do get hit because the relevancy of those links is just not there. I mean, I have seen people get smarter with it. I have seen people only put the footer link on one page and that one page with the most referring domains, the most like relevancy for that business. I've seen people get clever with it, but in the all, we don't do it because we just don't feel like for one, it's not worthy of a link. And for two, like we've seen actually like negative implications from it. Um, and also on top of that, you don't want to be using exact match anchors if you're going to do it. Uh, like I said, a lot of web development companies, for instance, say site made by, you know, XYZ agency. You want to, don't want to put a commercial anchors. You just want to put your brand term if you were to do it anyway. Um, so yeah, that'd probably be my stance on it. And probably no followed as well. Yeah. David, any thoughts on that? Similar? Um, I I believe the exact same thing. Um, the footer wide links, it's a thing of the past. It's not something I would ask for. If you are going to go ask for it, um, a really good place that I think would work would be in like the About Us page. Almost every company has one. Just at the bottom of the About Us page, say, you know, our website was designed and built by agency. And as you were saying, use the brand name, not commercial anchor text. Um, that could be a way. Um, but I think for an agency, it's a lot more valuable to to use what you do to build your own link. So we're, we're all marketers. So go out there and 
get mar- links in marketing articles and marketing blogs. That's way more contextually relevant than my website was built by this. Now, if I was just a website building company, that might be a bit different, but like, I don't know if there's any of those left where they just build websites or not many, um, but somebody like that, there might be a different uh, answer to that question. So. Interesting. And, and Dermot Clark says, I've got a new client that paid a service to add links to quality blog content on a bunch of dodgy rubbish business directory sites. Would these links be hurting my client performance? Likewise, there's another one uh, that asks, many legacy websites have hundreds of thousands of blog comments and link 2.0 links. Should they be touched at all? Um, no, so a couple of different question. questions. I wonder if we could cover them off in the same world I deal with uh, DJ Roomba, who's got an eager that it's now 11 a.m. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm happy to start that one off. Yeah, um, go for it. Yeah, like, so I'd probably say um, look at, like, the time the links were built. Look at the date, um, if you can, through a backlink tool. And then correlate if there was a traffic drop on that page where they've been built and the broader website overall, then you can kind of correlate if there's been a traffic drop. I'll also look at the quality of the directory. Um, you know, if it's one of those like, you know, low authority for low DRDA type sites. Um, that's irrelevant. You know, if it's a directory from like, you know, a, a different country targeting um, an Australian business, definitely worth looking into disavowing. Um, that'd probably be my quick hunch. I'd probably say it would, I mean, Google is now ignoring a lot of links rather than directly penalizing, but it may be worth looking into if it was done in an excessive level in a small time frame. Yeah, absolutely. David, do you have the same thoughts there, disavow? Um, I don't believe in the disavow tool at all anymore. Um, oh, okay. Unless okay, really? I actually follow Google's rule. If you actually want to be completely disassociated with that website, sure. But um, I ran a test against a website where I paid $200 for a thousand links. Um, Good deal. And Good so deal. nothing happened to it. <laughs> nothing happened to it. Um, I know, right? That's like 25 cents a link or whatever. So. Um, but nothing actually um, negatively or positively happened to the website at all. Google just okay, ignored it. And then I built three or four really good links and I saw a bit of an uplift. So it's hard to correlate if those thousand links were holding me back, um, except I did try disavowing them and still didn't see any change. So I don't think they, I, I, I think there will be cases where a bad link could negatively affect you um, it comes back to our previous comment about contextuality. If I'm building a bunch of links to a page for my marketing agency and they're all from marketing articles and blogs and they're all very contextually relevant and I suddenly turn around and build a thousand highly non-contextual links, maybe that will negatively affect you because Google will be confused more than ignoring it. They'll be like, wait, are you about marketing or are you about you know pornography? I'm not sure which one it is. Mm. So, yeah, I get confused sometimes too. <laughs> <laughs> or, or a better example, are you about dogs or marketing? I can't tell, Harry. You're, mm. you're sending mixed messages right now. Yeah, so. sorry. <laughs> Definitely yeah, if you're putting on the disavow, like, I think like it just depends if you've just correlated traffic drop and you know you can go into Search Console and you can check you know if you've gotten a penalty like, and especially if it's a link based penalty, then you'll know like I guess that's a very like real world use case to use a disavow. But I do agree, like, I think Google's getting good at, like, just ignoring links. Uh, that's definitely why it's worth, if you've gotten a significant traffic drop, to look into it a bit more in depth. Um, other than that, if it's just n- not too many and you haven't seen a big drop off, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's a good and point, there's... John, because you, you can generally see, like, I mean, not all the time, but sometimes you can actually see the negative impact on, you know, some of these negative links have. Yeah. Um, but David, have you, do you see the similar things? Well, I was actually going to say regarding the questions on like legacy links, if somebody built black hat links, you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago, um, one thing you can look at to see if those are still affecting you is you go back to, it was about two and a half, three years ago when Google released the update that was supposed to ignore all the really bad links. So it's just rather than negatively affecting you, they just ignore them. And a lot of websites that I was working with on the time that had dodgy backlinks, I saw a sudden lift. So if you go back to that point in time and you see a sudden lift, 
you know that Google has said, I'm just going to ignore these now and they're super yeah. legacy and I wouldn't even worry about them. But if yeah. you hit that point and you're still flatlined or you go down, I'd probably start to think maybe there's something in all that that's bad and I need to get rid of them. So Yeah, mm. absolutely. And look, on the flip side of that, uh, I've also seen big brands, especially recently with manual actions coming along, uh, where Google advised them to disavow the links. Uh, and this is as recently as the past month. I mean, Dijon, have you seen this? No, I haven't seen that, to be honest with you. Yeah, cool. Um, but yeah, so we had a couple big, big brands. Um, in fact, some brands that people all around the world would use daily for um, for things. I mean, these confidentiality things, huh, Dijon? <laughs> 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 um, so yeah, that they would do daily, and they got manually uh, action, and the Google just suggested disavowing that link portfolio. So, and it does look they're getting stricter as well. So, look, interesting stuff, and look, really interesting views. And I love personally getting the different views from different people. That's why I like this, this format, David. Um, getting different ideas um, from people about why links are important, when they might not be important, when they are less important. So that's really good. And look, thank you so much, David and Jean, and uh, for joining us. Uh, thank yeah, you so much, guys. everyone, for the questions. I know we couldn't even cover. We probably covered a quarter of them. I tried to get one from each person at least. Uh, but there's a heap of stuff. Obviously, backlinks are such a major thing. Um, David, Dijon, where can people get a hold of you if they have more questions? Uh, the best place is LinkedIn for me. LinkedIn? Yeah. Dijon? Me, LinkedIn, Dan Ladanovsky, at Dan Authority at Twitter, or, you know, hit me up on the Prosperity Media contact page website if you are when I have a chat. Awesome. Well, um, awesome stuff. Jacob, closing remarks? Yeah, look, it was really good. You, I learned a few things as well. It's just, you know, like Harry said, I love hearing different perspectives um, and experiences. But, yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks, David and Dijan. I really appreciate your time and your knowledge. Uh, thanks, Harry. Thanks, Jay, for having us. David, appreciate the debate. Yeah, yeah. So thanks, great to know. <laughs> well, we'll, uh, we'll mop up the arena now um, for, the, for the next one. Uh, the next one will be in a month's time, guys. We'll make sure that all the blood is off the arena um, <laughs> so, so that we can have a nice clean fight with no slippage. Well, who, who won round one? Uh, well, like in life, Ooh, there, are no <laughs> um, there are no winners. There are no winners like in life. So, uh, and, you know what? Hashtag it depends. You know, I'll let you decide. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much guys. Appreciate uh, appreciate everyone tuning in as well. Thank you. Everybody. Right, Take care.